Hello 171 class, this is your notes for section 3.1, exponential functions. Alright, an exponential function is just a uh, new type of function where the variable is up in the exponent. So we have some base, the base is defined to be a positive number. Alright, greater than zero means positive. But that positive number can't be one. And then that positive number that's not one is being raised to some varying power okay so X can be um, anything as long as uh, B is meets this criteria okay and um, the, the reason why it can't be one uh, is not it's, it's not like it produces a, a, an imaginary number or a, a division by zero or something like that uh, it can't be one because one to any power is one so it would just not be very interesting if b was 1. It would just be a horizontal line. But the reason why it has to be greater than 0, we do get into unreal numbers when b is, is some roots, um, or sorry, some bases. If b were allowed to be, for instance, negative 2, um, the domain of these things are, are all real numbers for x. It can be anything. So say, for instance, x were a half and b were negative 2. Well, that would be the square root of negative 2, which would be a, an imaginary number. So, since x can be any real number, b has to be a positive base for us to have a continuous function or, or um, real output everywhere. Alright, so th these are all examples of exponential functions. These are the things that we'll be dealing with in chapter 3, especially the beginning of chapter 3. Alright, now notice fractions are fine. They're, greater than 0. So anything between 0 and 1, the proper fractions, they're fine. Any fraction's fine. Any decimal's fine as long as it's a positive number. Alright, and then x, the variable, can have something added to it, subtracted from it, and it's still an exponential function. It doesn't have to just be x up here. It can be any variable expression up there. Alright, and then these are just so you can see what something that's not a exponential function looks like. Um, if the variable is in the base, if the base is a variable, that's a polynomial, which we discussed back in chapter 2. 1 to the x again, uh, that's not exponential, that's just a horizontal. That's literally the same thing as g of x equals 1, and there's no x there. And then again, we discussed the negative base. We can't have a negative base and raise it to a power and produce real output everywhere. And then x to the x. If the variable is the base and the power, that's no longer exponential either. Okay, um, We do need the, the variable to be in the exponent, but we can't have the variable and uh, uh, be the base and the exponent. Alright, let's just show how, how to use these things. So this is an exponential function. It's got a base being raised to a variable power. So that's exponential. It's just being multiplied by something else. Okay, but that's fine. It's still this part right here is exponential, so the whole function is exponential. So this models the average amount spent in dollars at a mall after X hours. So when you've been there one hour, this is a one. You've been there two hours, that's a two, and so on and so on and so on. So what's the average amount spent to the nearest dollar after four hours? Well, we're just going to type everything we see. We're just going to replace the X with a four to the nearest dollar, two hundred and fifty dollars. Okay after four hours. So you just plug in the x is the variable. This is a specific amount they want so we just replace the variable with that amount and we get about 250. Alright, if we wanted to graph it, um, notice these points here. 0, 1, that means x is 0, so 2 to the 0 power. Well, 2 to the 0 power is equal to 1. Anything to the 0 other than 0 is equal to 1. Alright, and then a 1 is paired with 2, so 0.12 is on there. So when x is 1, that's 2 to the first, the output is 2. So 1 goes to 2. 2 squared is 4, 2 to the third is 8, 2 to the negative 1 is a half. Alright, remember negative 1 means uh, reciprocal. Um, so 2 to the negative 1 is like 1 over 2 to the positive 1, or 1 half. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 over 2 to the positive 2, which would be 1 fourth, or 0.25. So we 
we get this function that in the negatives we're getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis as we move to the left. So that means we have a horizontal asymptote of the x-axis. And because I can raise 2 to any power, positive or negative, the domain is all real numbers. But because I'm starting with a positive number and I'm just raising it to powers, I can't get any negative values. It's impossible to get a negative. It's impossible to get 0 if you start with a base that's positive. So our range is all the positive numbers. All right, and again, you can plug this into your calculator very easily to graph it and have your calculator help you. So 2 raised to the x power, all right, and then graph it. All right, and then we see something that looks very similar to this. We can trace it, get those points, all right, or we can go to our table and get a bunch of points that way that are on there. Again, notice that everything's positive even if I go back into the negatives. Get just closer and closer to zero. All right, and then if the base is between um, zero and one, okay, so it's positive, but it's between zero and one, we get something similar, but the graph actually goes downhill left to right. It decreases, but it's the same look to it. It's got that horizontal asymptote y equals zero. All right, crosses the y-axis at one, just like it did before. Okay, um, domain and range are still identical. It's just the graph is kind of flipped around. Now, why does it flip around? Well, you got to remember, one half is the same thing as two to the negative one. So, I could write one half to the x power as two to the negative one to the x power. Then I could write two to the negative one to the x, because of the way that we, um, the property of exponents, we multiply these two. Negative one times x is negative x, and now I'm raising this thing to the negative x power. And if you remember, 2 to the negative x, if I change this from x to negative x, that flips over the y-axis. When I flip over the y-axis, I end up getting these points. All right, so remember, we can do that with all the proper fractions. There is an equivalent way to write it as a positive, or as a base bigger than 1, but to a negative power. And then we just use the fact that it's a negative power, flip it over the y-axis, and we have the graph of that. Okay, of course we can always use the calculator again here to uh, graph this for us. So change that from a, a 2 to a 0.5, okay, same thing as 1 half, and then graph it. And I get that graph that goes down from the left side and decreases the, for the entire domain. Alright, so uh, if the base is bigger than 1, we get an increasing function that increases on its entire domain, but if the base is a proper fraction less than one, then it decreases on its entire domain. All right, and here's several different ones. The closer the base is to zero, the steeper it comes down on the left side. Like for instance, like one tenth to the x would be really steep coming down here. All right, and then the bigger the base is, uh, bigger than one, the steeper it will be growing on the right side. But notice they all cross at uh, 1 on the y-axis, and they all have the horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. So that's just a few of the characteristics that all exponential functions share. Okay, They all have the domain of all real numbers, the range of all positives. They all have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. Okay, They all have a y-intercept of 1. And if the base is bigger than 1, it's increasing function, and if the base is between 0 and 1, it's a decreasing function. Okay, it's 1 to 1, so that means it's always increasing or decreasing, and um, it never, ever, ever will touch the x-axis. It gets close, but it never gets there, so horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. All those transformations that we discussed that functions um, do, that we talked about 1.6, all those transformations still hold, meaning that if we add something after we've done a base to a variable power, if we add after that, meaning it's not up in the exponent, it's afterwards, that's going to go up or down depending on the sign of that number. If we add or subtract in the exponent, inside where the um, variable is, then that's going to go left and right. Okay, the negatives, if the negative takes place after the x power, then that's going to be 
over the x-axis if the negative happens to the input or to the x and that's going to happen around the y-axis like we saw here one around the y-axis all right and then um the shrinking and stretching same thing as before if it's happening after you go to the x power that's vertically shrinking or stretching based on the sign of the number and uh, if it happens after or sorry before if it happens to the, the input then that's a horizontal strength or stretch so same exact transformation as discussed in 1.6 just a new type of function that we're applying those transformations to all right um the number e the natural base on your calculator you'll notice right here above the division sign if you can see it that's an e if i press second divide i see e i hit enter and i see 2.71828 this last number here is actually eight rather than seven uh, people in western north carolina know this number uh to many more decimal places than most because of the 1828 182 that should be an eight there but what E is defined B is this this expression one plus one divided by a number raised to that same number okay so when when it's one it's one plus one over one which is one one plus one is two two raised to the first is two All right but when it's two one plus one half to the second that's three halves to the second power that's two and a quarter All right if I did three halves squared I get the 2.25 and so anyway we're just taking this number right here and plugging that in for the end there and there and then you may think well that's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger but it doesn't all right as this gets bigger this starts to settle down and get closer and closer and closer to the same number and that number that it approaches is the number e the natural base now this number has very important properties in uh, calculus and you really won't get the true um, usefulness of this number until you take calculus uh, but it is something that we are going to use in this class now when e is being raised to a power which it is for our, our example right here when it's being raised to a power like that instead of using this e right here instead we use second ln which is this e to the x power all right, so on this problem, they're wanting us to assume that these northern Rocky Mountain populations of gray wolf is just going to keep growing the way it has been growing since they were almost extinct. And what we see here is if we type in this expression, 1.26 e to a power, I'm going to press second ln, there's the e to the power, and then I plug in point 0.247 times and then there's the x now this says um, in 2010 uh, estimate the population well x is years after 1978 so I can put in 2010 minus 1978 or I could you know subtract that get that number ahead of time and then um, and then do it but either way you just subtract to get how many years after 1978 that is and plug that in for the x and then there's our answer they'll be up to around 3412 okay that's reasonable considering 2006 it was at this number and it's starting to get pretty big pretty fast but just know when you have e to the power use this e over the natural log ln don't use this e all right, compound interest. Um, compound interest means we are putting um, something in a bank or borrowing money, and the amount that we originally borrowed and the amount that we originally deposited is growing, and we're also getting to keep that interest. So the interest grows along with the original loan or the, the original amount deposited. If it's n times per year, then we use this formula and plug in that number of times per year for that n. If it's continuous, I mean it's always collecting interest, then we use e. Okay, there's e. Now there's that one plus 
something over n to the n, and that ends up being e to the r power. So there's the, like the, where the e's coming from here. All right, but anyway, um, these are the two formulas we use when we see compound interest being used. So here's a problem that involves compound interest. We got eight grand. Um, we're going to invest it for six years, and we could go into either of these two accounts. This one pays 7% per year compounded monthly, which means N would be 12, because there's 12 months in a year. The second pays this percentage compounded continuously. All right, which is the better investment? So all we have to do with this is plug in the, the numbers for the two formulas. So we got 8,000, that's our value for P. Parentheses, all right, one plus R is the rate. So for the first one, we got 7%, so 0 0.07 divided by N, all right? N is compounded monthly, so N is 12. And then close the parentheses, raised to n times t is our power. We got multiplication in our exponent, so we do need parentheses there. So n again is 12 times, it tells us we're going to do this for six years. t is the time typically in years for these. All right, so there's the first. And then for the second one, we just do p, which is 8,000 again, times e to the rt. So second ln for e r for here is 6.85%, so I'm going to write that 0.0685, you always write it as a decimal, times 6. All right, and then there's our second account, so the one that pays monthly gives us more than the one that um, is continuous compounding. So even though it's compounding all the time, it still can't uh, come up with enough for that difference, for this one being a higher uh, nominal percent. So anyway, that's um, that's how we use these two formulas. And make note of the parentheses where the parentheses are, right, especially for the compounding n times per year because of the fact that you need parentheses in the power. Now you could also just multiply the 12 times 6, right, and then just plug in 72 right there, and then you don't have to have the second parentheses. But just note if you're going to use the formula as it's written, you also need parentheses around the exponent if you're going to do that show that multiplication in there and just plug it in as a formula